Dramatic footage shows the moment a wave of Ukrainian kamikaze drones swooping in and hitting a Russian tank, seemingly killing multiple soldiers on the field. The two-minute clip released by the Ukraine Strikes Drones Company on Telegram showed the first drone flying straight into an armored tank and explode as three Russian soldiers scrambled for cover. One of the soldiers can be seen wounded from the impact, which prompted his comrades to help scramble him to safety. The three soldiers were seen attempting to hide beneath the tank for cover, only for another drone to fly in and directly hit the tank on impact. Black smoke can be seen pouring out from underneath the tank, as a fire began to enfold the armored vehicle. A third and final drone crashes into the Russian tank, ultimately causing it to explode in a great ball of fire. This incident is one of many, as Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine hits its two-year mark, as Ukrainian forces run low on ammunition and foreign aid from its security allies such as the United States hangs in the balance. It comes a few days after Russia accused Ukraine of carrying out a series of drone strikes on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which the International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed killed one person. The IIAA said in a statement Sunday there were physical impact of the drone detonations at the nuclear power plant, including at one of its six reactors. Rafael Mariano Grossi, head of the UN's atomic watchdog agency, said it was the first time such an attack on the Russian-controlled power plant, Europe's largest, was carried out since November 2022. He condemned the attack as a clear violation of the five basic principles to avoid a serious nuclear accident at the plant he addressed in 2023. This is a major escalation of the nuclear safety and security dangers facing the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Such reckless attacks significantly increase the risk of a major nuclear accident and must cease immediately, Grossi said. More than two-thirds of the Russian tanks that Ukraine's military has destroyed in recent months have been taken out using first-person view, FPV drones, a NATO official told Foreign Policy, an increasing sign of Kiev's reliance on the unpiloted aircraft as it awaits more artillery ammunition from the United States and other Western countries. With much-needed funding and artillery rounds held up in Washington, the Ukrainian military has largely turned to FPV drones to carry out anti-tank attacks. Ukrainian troops operate the drones via a controller and are able to watch the machine's suicide attacks on Russian vehicles through video feeds, which now play on a loop on Ukrainian social media channels on Telegram and other platforms. In the third year of Russia's full-scale invasion, FPV drones have become nearly ubiquitous on the Ukrainian battlefield. Many of them can carry 10 pounds of explosives or more, and after nearly 780 days of non-stop war, drone pilots on both sides have gotten plenty of practice. I used to shoot such cinematic videos with the help of FPV drones before the war, Ukrainian documentary filmmaker Anton Ptushkin posted on X, formerly Twitter, last November. Now we use FPV to defend our land. But for every success, there are nearly as many blooper real-worthy incidents. These aren't the $20 million a piece Predator drones that the United States uses to hunt terrorist targets in the Middle East. These are inexpensive off-the-shelf drones that go for $400. They have cheap cameras, making them more difficult to aim at night or in cloudy weather. And they often carry improvised munitions such as grenades or home-built bombs, which sometimes detonate mid-flight. Some are duds. In one video shared on Telegram, a Ukrainian FPV drone gets stuck in the front window of a Russian minivan and doesn't explode. Others hit Russian quadcopters and tanks that have already been abandoned. So even if the Ukrainians lack enough long-range artillery, 
they can only use a few drones up to 10 kilometers, about 6 miles, because that's the normal range. Analysts tracking the Ukrainian military believe the attacks are having mixed results. Rob Lee, a senior fellow in the Foreign Policy Research Institute's Eurasia program, who last traveled to Ukraine to embed last November, said the overall accuracy of FPV drones is less than 50%. It's an experienced pilot who is going to score a kill of a tank, and the soldiers inside with an FPV drone, not a newbie. Even those drones that get through Russia's increasingly sophisticated, if unchic, countermeasures boxes of signals equipment strapped to tanks, might not deal a fatal blow. You usually don't kill a tank the first few times, Lee said. It can take 10 or more FPV drones to kill a tank. Still, Russia has a good reason to cover up its tanks with camouflage and jamming equipment, Lee said. It is running low on armored vehicles and tanks. If Ukraine keeps attriting at this rate, and Russia keeps sending in more tanks to replace the destroyed ones at the rate it has been, the Kremlin could lose its numerical edge in tanks, which could make it more difficult for the Russians to carry out offensive operations in the future.